Welcome to Endless Relaxation. I'd like to give a special shout out to some of my awesome friends here on YouTube. Meditation Inspiration Plus, Hilda DC, Pill of Focus, The Gathering Within, Rogue Legend Gaming, and Celestial Paradise. I will leave links in my description box below. Everyone, show them some support. This was my first time visiting this beautiful lake. As you can see, the lovely mountain background. This is at the Botanical Gardens here in Hawaii. It was a challenge to find a nice, quiet spot. Even though I was there at 9.30 in the morning, a lot of people having a good time feeding the ducks, laughing, slipping in the mud like I did. I hope everyone enjoys this. What is a lake? A lake is a body of water that is surrounded by land. There are millions of lakes in the world. They are found on every continent and in every kind of environment, in mountains and deserts, on plains and near seashores. Lakes vary greatly in size. Some measure only a few square meters and are small enough to fit in in your backyard. Such small lakes are often referred to as ponds. Other lakes are so big that they are called seas. The Caspian Sea in Europe and Asia is the world's largest lake with an area of more than 370,000 square kilometers. The water in lakes come from rain, snow, melting ice, streams, and groundwater seepage. Most lakes contain fresh water. All lakes are either open or closed. If water leaves a lake by a river or other outlet, it is said to be open. All freshwater lakes are open. If water only leaves a lake by evaporation, the lake is closed. Closed lakes usually become saline or salty. This is because as the water evaporates, it leaves behind solids, mostly salts. The Great Salt Lake in the U.S. state of Utah is the largest saline lake in North America. Its waters is saltier than the ocean. Surrounding the Great Salt Lake are salt flats, areas where the lake has evaporated, leaving only stretches of white salt. Many lakes form as a result of volcanoes. After a volcano becomes inactive, its crater may fill with rain or melted snow. Sometimes the top of a volcano is blown off or collapses during an eruption leaving a depression called a caldera. It, too, may fill with rainwater and become a lake. Crater Lake in the U.S. state of Oregon, one of the deepest lakes in the world, was created when ancient Mount Mazama's volcanic cone collapsed. Lakes may also be created by landslides or mudslides that send soil, rock, or mud sliding down hills and mountains. The debris piles up in natural dams that can block the flow of a stream, forming a lake. Dams that beavers build out of tree branches can plug up rivers or streams and make large ponds or marshes. Once lakes are formed, they do not stay the same. Just like people, they go through different life stages, youth, maturity, old age, and death. All lakes, even the largest, slowly disappear as their basins fill with sediment and plant material. The natural aging of a lake happens very slowly over the course of hundreds and even thousands of years, but with human influence, it can take only decades. Lakes are important in preserving wildlife. They serve as migration stops and breeding grounds for many birds 
and as refuges for a wide variety of other animals. They provide homes for a diversity of organisms, from microscopic plants and animals to fish that may weigh hundreds of kilograms. The largest fish found in lakes is the sturgeon, which can grow to 6 meters, or 20 feet, and weigh more than 680 kilograms. That is 1,500 pounds. Plants growing along the lakeshore may include mosses, ferns, reeds, rushes, and cattails. Small animals such as snails, shrimp, crayfish, worms, frogs, and dragonflies live among the plants and lay their eggs on them both above and below the waterline. Farther from the shore, floating plants such as water lilies and water hyacinths often thrive. They have air-filled bladders or sacs that keep them afloat. These plants shelter small fish that dart in and out under their leaves. Water bugs, beetles, and spiders glide and skitter across the surface or just below it. Small islands, floating plants, or fallen logs provide sunny spots for turtles to warm themselves. Lakes are valuable resources for people in a variety of ways. Through the centuries, lakes have provided routes for travel and trade. The Great Lakes of North America, for example, are major inland routes for ships carrying grain and raw materials such as iron ore and coal. Farmers use lake water to irrigate crops. The effect of very large lakes on climate also helps farmers. Lakes supply many communities with water. Artificial lakes are used to store water for times of drought. Lakes formed by dams also provide hydroelectric energy. The water is channeled from the lake to drive generators that produce electricity. Because lakes are often very beautiful, they are popular recreation and vacation spots. People seek out their sparkling waters to enjoy boating, swimming, water skiing, fishing, sailing, and in winter, ice skating, ice boating, and ice fishing. Many public parks are built near lakes, allowing people to picnic, camp, hike, bike, and enjoy the wildlife and scenery the lake provides. I hope everyone enjoys this beautiful, overcast, windy day here with me in Hawaii. Aloha!